Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kran from Boazji University. In this video, we will be covering the second part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on the calcium signaling system proposed for the molecular communication approach of the Nano Networking re research. How this system works, from which biological phenomena it is inspired from. As we described in the previous video, there are a variety of biological intercell communication mechanisms that rely on diffusion dynamics. A specific case of these diffusion-based intercell communication systems are ion-based diffusion systems. Ions are atoms or molecules with electrical charges, like potassium and calcium ions. In living tissues, some cell types are observed to be communicating with each other via the usage of ions. And notable of these cells are called the astrocytes. These astrocyte cells reside in brain and spinal cord tissues. They have a variety of roles which can somewhat be summarized as supporting the neuron cells and maintaining their continuous operation. One important aspect of astrocytes is the fact that they coordinate and collaborate among themselves to form a group behavior. They achieve this co coordination via the usage of gate-like structures at their cell membranes that links an astrocyte cell to its neighbors. These membrane gates are called gap junctions, which allow the passage of small molecules and ions between neighboring cells while barring the movement of bigger molecules and organelles. This type of intercell communication is called intercellular calcium waves, or ICW in short, in the cell biology literature. Let us give an example of how the ICW mechanism works by considering a simple two-cell system. Based on some extracellular event or occurrence, for example an increase of the heat level in the environment, the cell is triggered. The cell reacts to the stimuli by a chain of chemical reactions, which end with the release of a special type of molecules called IP3s. Then, these IP3 molecules start diffusing inside the cell, and some of them reach the IP3-sensitive receptors at the membrane of the organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER for short. The ER stores a high level of calcium ions, and this reception triggers the organelle to release these calcium ions to the cytosol. After some time, these ions are pumped back inside the ER organelle, and the cytosolic calcium concentration returns to its normal values. In an ICW system, this cytosolic calcium ion concentration is considered as a time-varying signal representing the message. While some IP3 molecules are triggering the cell's ER, some other released IP3 molecules diffuse through the gap junctions to the neighboring cell and trigger the ER of that neighboring cell to release its own calcium ions. In this way, the cell on the left achieves on transmitting, or in other words, relaying the message generated by the external stimuli. In a system with more than two cells, this signal relaying continues for a certain number of cell hops based on various values like the strength of the initial stimuli. Inspired by this ion-based diffusion system called ICW, Nakano et al. have proposed a molecular communication system called the calcium signaling in their 2005 paper. The system is composed of the transmitter, the intermediary calcium channel, and the receiver. Considering the ICW system explained in the previous slide, the transmitter and the receiver are external devices, while the channel is composed of cells that exhibit ICW-like capabilities. The transmitter encodes the message over a stimuli, which triggers the closest cell of the calcium-capable channel. Information is carried in the channel over the calcium ions to reach the other end of the channel, which is close by to the receiver. The system is somewhat akin to the CVD system in the sense that the information-carrying particles 
the calcium ions and the IP3 molecules are propagating via the diffusion dynamics. However, unlike the CVD system, the environment is much more restricted and controllable in the calcium signaling system. The five-step communication model can be translated to calcium signaling as follows. The external stimuli, which initiates the whole communication process, constitutes the encoding step of the model. The release of the IP3 and calcium molecules based on the external stimuli inside the first cell is a transmission step. The propagation and relaying of the signal between the adjacent cells, starting from the first cell couple to the last through the calcium channel, is covered by the propagation or channel step. As the reception step at the last calcium capable cell, the calcium signal is translated back into an external stimuli. Then, this resulting external signal is sent to the receiver device, which decodes the original data from the signal in the decoding step, finalizing the communication process. At this moment, we can ask the question for how long IP3 molecules originating from the initial cell can move through the channel. Actually, they do not move more than a couple of cells. However, as you can see from this figure, there is a positive feedback loop between the increased cytosolic concentrations of IP3 molecules and calcium ions, which enables the signal to be practically regenerated at each cell along the channel. Also, according to the biological ICW models, it has been observed that, in addition to the signal regeneration through the IP3 molecules, there is another way of signal regeneration which is very similar to the basic CVD system, utilizing ATP molecules. For the sake of simplicity, in this module, we will not be focusing on this ATP-based external pathway method of the ICW mechanism. The last two steps of the calcium signaling system is the opposite of the first two steps. The external stimuli can be anything ranging from a second type of ions to bigger molecules like the messenger molecules used in the CVD system. This time, the bit value of the data is represented by the calcium ions and its cytosolic concentration value in a given time slot. Also, similar to the CVD system, when the cytosolic calcium concentration exceeds a certain threshold, the data is considered to be carrying the bit value of 1, whereas it, if it does not, the data represents a bit value of zero. Although the data representation is only relevant to the last cell in the calcium channel in the aforementioned model, depending on the application, the calcium concentration values at the intermediary cells may also have some real-life meanings. This is not the only way of using the natural ICW mechanism as a starting point of a communication system. We can devise alternative communication models and systems utilizing this phenomena. For example, we can lose the calcium capable and non calcium capable device distinction to come up with a more generic model. In this alternative calcium signaling system, all the devices in the communication system are calcium capable and there are no external stimulus components. Similar to the wireless sensor network topology, there is a sync node in the center of the topology and numerous other regular nodes with varying hop distances to the central sync node. The system is focused on applications where either a group behavior or a sensing activity is needed from a high number of nodes covering an area. In the group behavior application, the communication starts from the sync node and propagates to all other nodes in the topology. On the other hand, in the sensing application, the communication starts from the regular nodes, usually from the outermost nodes, and converts at the central sync node. These nodes actively sense the environment for some specific attributes like heat, pH level, or the concentration of some certain chemicals. They periodically or aperiodically report these values to the sync node by relaying the information over the intermediary regular nodes in the topology. To summarize, we can itemize the features of the calcium signaling system as follows. Like the CVD system, 
It is also a biocompatible system, utilizing ions that are chemically known by the living tissues so that there is no serious problem of using a biohazardous component. While the CVD system has a range issues for being limited to ranges up to a couple of tens of micrometers, the calcium signaling system can attain much longer ranges like a couple of hundreds of micrometers. It has an inherent relaying capability and due to its confined environment, it is faster than the CVD system, which helps it to be used for applications requiring faster response times. As for the negative aspects, the main problem of the calcium signaling system is the necessity of a pre-deployed infrastructure in order the system to work. In this sense, we can argue that the calcium signaling system more resembles a wired communication system than a wireless communication system. This infrastructure requirement reduces the system's usability and ad hoc environments considerably. Also, setting up this infrastructure requires a great deal of energy from the communicating pairs, which might be too cumbersome if the communication will not be continuing for long periods. We can say that the calcium signaling is much more useful than the CVD system for backbone or similarly purposed links. So, we have given an overview on the calcium signaling system in the nano networking and molecular communications research in this video. We will be continuing with the terahertz signaling system in the third video of the basic level. Here you can see the references of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.